Hello guys, my name is Sergey. I'm a freediving instructor trainer and on this channel I'm sharing with all of you guys everything what I know about freediving. So if you're a freediver, subscribe to this channel because you're gonna find a lot of useful information. So today I want to talk about dynamic bifins training and more specifically about sprints uh, for dynamic bifins training. So I want to talk why this uh, exercise, why this training exercise can be useful for all of you guys. And the reason number one it helps you to improve your technique. Uh, quite often, one of the mistakes in dynamic by fins for beginner and let's say intermediate freediver, they do kicks pretty wide. So they do a wide kick and this is gonna create a lot of dragging, so it's gonna create some resistance and then it's gonna be uh, less effective if it's gonna be smaller kicks. And sometimes freedivers don't even understand when I'm asking them, can, can you do a little bit smaller kicks, they, they do again the next dynamic by fin swim and then the technique is the same. And for such people, I asking sometimes do an underwater sprints, so from one wall to another wall, swim as fast as they can. And then in the sprints, it's much more easy to do really small kicks. And again, it helps these free divers to understand that it's possible to do a smaller kick. And when we do a normal dynamic by fins, they're kicking becoming not that big. So this is one of the reasons why to do dynamic by fin sprints is working on your technique. However, this is not the main goal for such training regime. The main goal is to uh, allow your legs working in a pure, almost pure anaerobic regime. Because let's imagine you are planning to do, I don't know, like 120 meter dynamic. So at the end of this swim, like after 100 meters, or maybe like before the 100 meters, your legs gonna work with quite limited amount of oxygen. It's not gonna be like pure anaerobic regime. It's still gonna be some oxygen circulating in your blood, uh, in your legs. This is why it's gonna be like some kind of uh, proportion between aerobic and anaerobic energy production. Your legs gonna experience some kind of mild version of hypoxia. So if you are on your training, if you never do maximums often, which I don't recommend to do for all of you guys, I don't recommend to do uh, maxim, maximum swims too often. So maybe like once for, uh, per few week, but not often than that. But then if you don't do often maximum dynamic by fins, then your legs is kind of doesn't experience this. And in training, in any training, we have a so-called specificity. When you use specific exercise to train different muscle fibers and different uh, energy system in your bodies. Then when you do like mild uh, distance, let's say 50, 60, 70 percent from your maximum, your legs not experiences this hypoxia and this is why you're not training uh, your leg muscles to withstand this hypoxia, to uh, work better in this, uh, in this regime. So how you can create it during your training? I don't recommend you to do uh, during your training uh, maximum attempt, at least not too often, but what you can do, you can do short sprints. How short? It depends on your pool. For example, our pool is 22 meters, so I can do sometimes like a 44 meter swim. It is 22, turn 22, but then it's like not pure sprint because when you're turning, you're kind of having a little rest. So this is why more often I do just 22 meter swim. And in the beginning, you can start with do like a just sprints, but then more likely after a while, it's gonna be relatively easy for you. And I was thinking, okay, how I can make it, how I can make it more specific and I decided to do some version of resistant. So first I start swimming with a swimming parachute, as you can see on the video. parachute was not really convenient when I tried to do a turn, right? Because like you do 22 meters, you turn and sometimes parachute get messed. So this is why when I do 22 meters, I still using the parachute. But when I want to do like 44 meters, so then I prefer to use the swimming uh, like a drag shorts. So this is an example. You can find it on Amazon. Both links to the swimming parachute and this kind of drag shorts you can find down in the description. So if you don't have it, consider to buy it. 
So in other variables inside training can be uh, vary the rest period. So for example, if you do a sprint and then your rest is really long, so up to five minutes, uh, then you're gonna completely recover after, let's say, first sprint, and then you're gonna do another sprint, and this is gonna be training for your creatine phosphate energy system. And then if your rest is gonna be smaller, and it's not gonna be like enough time for full recover, then it's mainly gonna be like a uh, still anaerobic regime, but it's gonna be anaerobic lactate regime. Okay guys, another important question is for whom such training can be useful. If you're doing dynamic biofins, let's say less than 70 meters, so then this exercise is not what you're looking for. So you have a lot of different exercise, exercise to do. But if you are like already swimming 100 meters or more than 100 meters or close to 100 meters, then I think uh, you're gonna benefit from this exercise if you're doing it from time to time. How often I do it? Uh, like maybe once per week. Again, it depends on what uh, training cycle I am, but like quite often I do it like once per week. And sometimes I do like a half session uh, 22 meters with like really really uh, fast swim and with a really nice recovery like five minutes recovery and then maybe another half session I'm gonna do uh, 40 meters swim like actually 44 with a short recovery time so in this case I'm gonna train like a different energy system so guys hopefully this video was useful for you uh, if it was useful let me know in comments and I will see you next time